Jurassic Park was an excellent film, bringing out every child and adult child's fantasy of dinosaurs roaming the earth. Who wouldn't want to see a live action film with a realistic T-Rex ripping through people like a meat grinder? The film was a hit and went on to make 912 million and was beloved by all people all over the world. I watched that fucking movie so many times it started to look like this. Now, granted, they made a couple more that weren't as well received, but you have to admit, there was something truly special about this movie. I wanted to take a, a deep dive into the film itself and explain the hidden message that escaped so many viewers over the years. Everyone was right to blame John Hammond for the disaster of Jurassic Park, but they all got it wrong when it came down to why he failed. Oh, John fucking Hammond, where did it all go wrong? I'll show you. Was it when you got the idea in your head to play God and bring back an extinct species that was never meant to coexist with humanity? Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Or was it because you brought your fucking annoying grandkids to a sales pitch for your multi-million dollar megalomaniac theme park? Where did you find this? It walks under my seat. Are they heavy? Yeah. Then they're expensive, put them back. No. It's the fact that you always say, Spend no expense. Spend no expense. But refuse to pay your fucking employees what they're worth. You should have stuck with the flea circus, you fucking hypocrite. People would say they could see the fleas. Oh, I can see the fleas, mommy, can't you see the fleas? Now we're about to open Zeus's butthole on you and explain why Dennis Nedry was right and your financial failure to him caused the downfall of the entire theme park. Not to mention the innocent deaths of... Mr. <laughs> the blood-sucking lawyer. Thank you. Clever girl. But before we get into this, we need to explore the man himself. Who was Dennis Nedry? Dennis Nedry was an accomplished computer network engineer hailing from Cambridge, Massachusetts. His expertise and experience made him uniquely qualified to run a majority of Jurassic Park's internal system as project supervisor. I'm totally unappreciated in my time. You can run this whole park in this room with minimal staff for up to three days. You think that kind of automation is easy or cheap? You know anybody who can network eight connection machines and debug two million lines of code for what I bid for this job? Now, you're talking about someone who has thought highly enough to be running the technical side of the first theme park for fucking dinosaurs, okay? I, I would say that's a big fucking deal. If John Hammond was to spare no expense on everything from specialty Jeeps, to buffet table gelatin, you would think he would have his employees covered, especially the ones who are crucial to the entire operation. No, John Hammond is a fucking cheapskate, and oh boy, is he gonna pay for it. Hold on to your butts. Never yet found out that he underbid for his position, and to make matters worse, his employer was completely unsympathetic. Sorry about your financial problems, Dennis. I really am, but they are your problems. Oh, you're right, John. You're absolutely right. You know, everything's my problem. I will not get drawn into another financial debate with you, Dennis. I really will not. There's been hardly any debate at all. For example, <laughs> it was a nightmare for him to get home to Cambridge, Massachusetts and back. Granted, he had a helicopter to ferry him to Costa Rica, but he had to pay for the round trip flight every time he wanted to see his family. It was just easier to live on the island and stew in his depression. He developed an eating disorder and was spending a huge chunk of his salary purchasing junk food from his own company vending machines. Find Landry, check the vending machines. Feeding his addiction with butterfingers? The resentment he felt to his coworkers and the employer grew over the next several months. Thanks, Dad. It truly changed his personality, making him snarky and combative. Dennis, the headlights. Yeah, I'll debug the tour program when they get back, okay? Okay? John Hammond. That fucking asshole had plenty of time to rectify the situation, but he chose not to. So when the opportunity for financial gain came around for Dennis, there was no loyalty binding him to Hammond or anyone at Jurassic Park. Dennis was approached by- Dodson! Dodson! We've got Dodson here! See, nobody cares. To steal dino embryos, giving Biosyn a competitive edge against InGen. He was offered 1.5 million in 1990s money, along with additional bonus for each embryo. Bottom screws open. <laughs> Oh, God. It's cool to compartmentalize inside. 
Oh, you got so oh, that's great. The bad storm had narrowed his window of opportunity, forcing Nedry to rush his operation. No, 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 listen, you gotta give me the time. I did a test run on this thing, it took me 20 minutes. He had to disable the security systems in order to get the embryo, so he made a point to cover his tracks by saying, Anybody want a, a soda or something? Because uh, I'm, I'm going up to the machine, I thought maybe, you know, I, I'd get somebody something, because I, I had all these sweets and I think I'm gonna get something salty. I thought maybe some would be Oh, uh, I uh, finished debugging the phones. Uh, I, you know, I was gonna debug, so I did. I, I, you know, told me that, so I, I debugged the phones. And uh, I thought maybe, uh, I should tell you that the uh, system is gonna be uh, compiling for uh, 18 to 20 minutes. So some of the minor systems, they might go on and off for a while, but it's nothing to worry about, it's just a simple thing. Nedry initiated his program. Like a fucking boss, I might add. Look at that son of a bitch multitask. Fucking beautiful. With everyone distracted by both the storm and the security lockdown, Nedry was able to make his move. Well, you know how it eventually turned out for Dennis. Stick! Stick, stupid! That's a stick point! <laughs> a sad, tragic end to a brilliant man who was let down a dark path due to the negligence of his employer. John Arnold, chief engineer and brilliant member of the staff, was unable to disable Nedry's program. Access main program grid. Uh-uh-uh, you didn't say the magic word. Uh, Please! Uh, uh. The only way to disable the program was to shut off the systems and reboot completely. Now typically, the IT solution is to shut down and reset. That fixes any problem. However, in this case, this would fully unleash hell on the island. Everyone advised John Hammond against it. We've never shut down the entire system before. It may not come back on at all. But he would not listen. People are dying. Please shut down the system. John's actions led to the demise of his own theme park and lifelong dream. He decided to play God and neglect the very employees who helped make his dream come true. Well, let that be a lesson to all of you fucking cheapskates who cut corners with your staff's salary. I can't get Jurassic Park back online without Dennis Nedry. Well, the franchise itself went a bit downhill, even with the resurgence of Jurassic World. Now Spielberg himself is still an accomplished director, and thanks to him, his daughter had the opportunity to star in movies like Super 8, Motel Gangbang, Jurassic Pork, and Catch Genital Herpes if you can. I guess the road apple fell far from the tree on that one. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share it with those other oppressive tech companies like Facebook and Twitter. Thanks, Dad.